Can you see my screen? We can see your screen, yes. And we can see you perfect. as well. I'm gonna, perfect. I'm gonna open up this chat bar so I can maybe see questions as they come in so I don't miss anybody. Um, thank you for that, Matt. Uh, I agree, um, your introduction there was perfect in terms of why are we looking at these feeding trials? What's the real value? Why are we trying to answer some of these questions? Um, and thank you, Molly, excellent presentation. Uh, really exciting work that you guys are doing there at the University of Illinois. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Becca Bratton. Um, I was previously a livestock nutritionist with KWS Cereals. I actually was just promoted to a role as country manager managing our cereals team here in the United States. Um, but feeding livestock is still definitely a passion of mine, something I have lots of interest in. And so I'm happy to share some of my expertise uh, today on that topic. And so Molly did an excellent job talking us through a lot of the pig feeding trials that they're doing. Um, but I want to talk to some of our cattle producers in the audience and maybe how hybrid rye can fit for them. So, if I can get my screen to advance. There we go. So, um, I'm going to go through just a really brief introduction, talk about some of the finishing cattle trials that we've completed. Um, one of them just a typical how does some ground um, rye compared to ground corn. Um, looking at what does it look like if we're feeding whole rye to cattle um, and then how we can use this information to really calculate a value for hybrid rye and then some final conclusions. Oh geez, sorry. <laughs> so just a real brief introduction. Um, most of us probably know these if we're feeding uh, livestock, but there's really what we would consider energy yielding nutrients. Um, and those are our carbohydrates, our fats and our proteins. We're typically looking at our cereal sources as a source of carbohydrates. And so that's where I'm gonna really focus today. Um, we know that these small grains can certainly provide things like protein, amino acids, which are critical for our diets. Um, but since we're talking about replacing corn, we're typically feeding corn as an energy source. Um, I'm gonna look really closely at how hybrid rye compares to corn as an energy source in our cattle diets. So no question, corn and soy is the industry standard for energy and protein. Um, but we know that lots of small grains can certainly be viable energy sources as well, whether that's wheat, hybrid rye, conventional rye, barley, oats. But what really it comes down to is price on these and how that compares. We've seen corn prices rising and rising over the last several weeks. And so we're starting to really see some value in some of these small grains. Um, and so cost effectiveness along with nutritional value becomes really important. So I'm gonna start with performance how do animals perform on hybrid rye and take that all the way through to what's a dollar amount look like that we could really afford to pay? Or what does it look like if I'm producing this hybrid rye um, from a cost perspective for my beef cattle? So first I wanna introduce you to a study we did at SDSU. Um, huge thanks to Dr. Zach Smith and Warren Rushi there. They are a part of the beef cattle extension team and research team. Uh, they actually conducted this experiment. So I have to credit them for all this research uh, but basically, we wanted to directly pair, compare ground hybrid rye to dry rolled corn. And so we did a head to head comparison, replacing up to all of the corn in that diet. So 60% of the diet was corn. That's our control diet. We then replaced it with 20% of the diet as rye. So we call that our 40 20 diet 40% corn, 20% rye. We upped it to either 40% rye then, and then all the way up to a complete, re complete replacement of 60% rye. And we did this to really be able to calculate what is the energy value of ground hybrid rye. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the performance data. Uh, and then when I get to the end, show you what that calculated energy value looks like. So if I set up this table for you here, we're looking at um, the effects of dry rolled corn versus rye on dry matter intake. Uh, you can see the solid black bar is our control diet, and then all the way over to the 0, 060 is the dash with the little triangles. Now, there was no difference in feed intake through about the first 56 to 63 days. Then we start to see a little bit of separation. Um, there's a couple hypotheses of why we see this at this time point. Um, 
This rye was not cleaned, so there was a little bit of ergot there. Um, this could have been a buildup of ergot and basically a difference in ergot uh, levels at this point. Um, there's also some hypothesis that we didn't grind the rye enough. Um, and so we were just not utilizing as much of its energy or we were decreasing some of the palatability. Um, but basically we did start to see a little bit of a difference in intake um, at the later part of this trial. If we look at our final body weights, uh, we do see a linear decrease between our control and our high ride diet. But what I think is really interesting to point out is that there's no difference when we're including 20% hybrid rye in the diet compared to a corn-based control. And we see this same no difference when we look at average daily gain um, with that 20% rye diet performing very similarly to our corn-based control diet. Again, if we're looking here, our bars are our feed to gain or basically our efficiency. Um, and the line here would, would represent our dry matter intake. Remember, we did see that decrease in deviation over time. So no surprise, this line decreases as we go. Um, but again, if we're looking at just these first two diets, we see basically no difference in um, their efficiency or the amount of feed that they're intaking to grow. I know people always ask, well, what about the end product? What's that going to look like? Am I going to be um, disturbing meat quality in any way? Uh, one of the big take homes is basically that ribeye area, uh, rib fat, the USDA yield grades, all of those were not affected, even if we had a complete replacement of corn with hybrid rye. So from that standpoint, uh, we're really pretty comfortable that these cattle can go on to harvest and really have no difference in terms of their carcass performance. Most importantly though, we were able to look at this data and get an actual calculated energy value that we can assign to hybrid rye. Um, so our performance derived net energy values you can see here on the screen. NEM is our net energy for maintenance. NEG is our net energy for gain. And from this data, we can very comfortably calculate that rye has about 89% the net energy for gain value of that of corn. We wanted to look and see how these compare back to some book values um, that we have for some old population varieties of rye, because um, these were not, these old book values did not include any hybrids. And you can actually see that our hybrids tend to have a bit more energy uh, than some of these old open populated, open population varieties of rye. We found that very interesting. The next question I get from a lot of beef producers is, what happens if I'm not processing this hybrid rye? I'm growing this crop, I don't have the mill capacity or setup to be grinding it, processing it. Can I feed whole hybrid rye to my cattle? Uh, we thought it was a very interesting question. We know if you don't process grains, you're going to sacrifice some energy value. Um, but the question is how much? Will your cattle still grow? Will they still perform? Um, and what's that energy value for unprocessed hybrid rye? So that's exactly what we looked at in our second experiment. Again, same credit to SDSU and their research station there. This trial was also conducted there. Uh, so huge thank you to them again. This time we only looked at two treatments. The base diet was just 60% dry rolled corn. So keep in mind, this is processed corn. We wanted to be able to compare to processed corn versus 60% unprocessed rye. Um, and so basically it's a head-to-head -head comparison, direct replacement of all of that dry rolled corn in the diet. Looking here, not surprising, we do see a difference in our final body weights with a decrease for those unprocessed hybrid rye cattle, which is to be expected. We know that energy value is going to be lower. This experiment was really to help us calculate how much lower. We see a difference in average daily gain as well and a difference in dry matter intake with those cattle consuming actually more of that unprocessed rye. Now, this is actually pretty easy to explain why this happened. Those cattle are getting a much lower energy diet and oftentimes to compensate for lower energy diets, those animals will consume more feed to make up for that lack of energy. That's likely what you see here. No surprise, they're eating more, gaining less, they have lower efficiency as well. But we were able to calculate a very nice net energy for maintenance and net energy gain from this experiment. 
Now we know that uh, hybrid rye when processed is about 89% the value of corn and um, unprocessed hybrid rye will then be about 91% the value of that processed hybrid rye. So I know there's a lot of numbers here. Um, there's what do these NEGs mean and what does that really mean for the farmer or the beef cattle producer in terms of what they can afford to pay for this product. So I'm going to use those energy values to help kind of grasp what that number may look like. So first, let's start with what is the energy value of hybrid rye for ruminants and how does it compare to corn? So the corn values fairly well published. It's in a lot of different places. Um, this is from the NRC and they give an NEG for corn of 64. So from our experiments, we were able to calculate that uh, hybrid rye is 57 and the unprocessed rye uh, has an NEG of 51. Sorry, I'm just trying to read your question here. Shouldn't the comparison been whole corn versus whole hybrid rye? So we definitely could have made that comparison and there's published book values for what whole corn uh, looks like. We were trying to get a really clear calculation on what the energy value was for that unprocessed hybrid rye. So that was really the point of the experiment. Um, we would have still likely seen differences um, because unprocessed corn still has probably more energy than the unprocessed hybrid rye. Um, but this experiment was really just to calculate, help us calculate an NEG. So yes, we definitely could have made that comparison, but there are some very well published book values on unprocessed corn as well. So we could look at those to see where that comparison is as well. Um, and likely it would fall somewhere near the energy value of the processed hybrid rye. But if we look at these numbers, we can then go on to say, sorry, my slides aren't advancing again. We can then go on to say, how much could I afford to pay for my hybrid rye if I was purchasing it? So we can do this by basically calculating a comparable cost based on energy values. So on my last slide, I showed you that the corn NEG is 64, rye NEG is 57 when it's processed. Um, and the nice part is bushel comparison is easy because they both weigh 56 pounds. So let's say corn costs are 375 a bushel, which I know they're higher than that now. Um, but just to use that number uh, as perspective here, we can then go on and calculate based on those differences in energy, what we could afford to pay for a bushel of rye. So based on these energy values, if corn is 375 a bushel, we can afford to pay 336 a bushel for rye to get the same performance from our cattle um, at the same price. So here we can look at comparisons of what price could we afford if we're going to process our hybrid rye versus what price can we afford to pay if we're not processing our hybrid rye. So this is strictly for the farmer that is purchasing commodities. We're not talking about growing it, um, break even cost to grow, all those types of things. This is just what if we're purchasing. So then that bears the question, what if I'm growing my corn and what if I'm growing my hybrid rye? What does it cost to produce that energy? And this is where the discussion gets very interesting. So I've pulled together some crop budgets here um, and you can see, I apologize, the unprocessed should also be KWS. I don't know why I have a PFI citation under that. That should also be KWS 2019. Um, but the corn budget comes from published data from the University of Illinois from 2019 with uh, average estimated costs for corn production in the state of Illinois. So if we compare these numbers here, we can look at what the total direct cost per acre is to produce each crop. Then if we look down at the next line here, we can look at how much net energy, how many mega cows we're producing per acre. We know corn has more energy, so it's no surprise we're getting more energy per acre from corn compared to either processed or unprocessed hybrid rye. But when we factor in the cost per acre to produce each unit of energy, it's actually cheaper, even if we're not processing our hybrid rye, to produce this hybrid rye crop to be feeding for an energy source to our cattle. So it becomes very interesting for the integrated farmer that's growing and producing their own crops, even if they don't have the ability to process their hybrid rye. 
The other thing this doesn't take into account is what's the added value of using hybrid rye in your rotation? Um, we have crop diversity, we're diversifying our rotation, improving soil health. We're opening up this rotation for the opportunity to be using a winter cover crop. Um, and then there's also the additional straw or organic matter that we get from a small grain and the opportunities to better utilize our labor resources. We're harvesting at different times. We have an opportunity for summer manure application. And one of my favorite points is actually market flexibility. If we're producing two cereal grains that we both know can be fed to our livestock, we have the opportunity to utilize the cheaper one to feed our livestock and to market the one we can get more money from. So corn prices are high, let's market our corn and feed our hybrid rye. Let's say your hybrid rye is excellent one year and you can get a contract for distilling. You take advantage of your distilling contract, market your hybrid rye and feed your corn. So all of those things ultimately mean that for the integrated farmer, there's more opportunities to make money. So some brief conclusions. Uh, we know that it has a favorable nutritional profile uh, and can be easily incorporated into livestock diets as an alternative for corn. What changes is the economic value depending on your market system. If you're purchasing it as a commodity, we know it needs to be priced competitively to corn. But if you're an integrated farmer, we can see some huge benefits from producing hybrid rye uh, that make it really cost effective to fit into your beef cattle diets. So both the cost of production and our yield from hybrid rye make it an attractive feedstuff. It's why we're really focusing on this market for both hogs and beef cattle. Um, and then one point we haven't touched on is actually that this nutritional profile of hybrid rye is a little bit unique to corn. And we may see some added value some, from small grains that maybe we haven't noted here yet. So I know that was a lot of information. Thank you for your time. Uh, this is my contact information on this slide. I can also enter it into chat. Uh, if you guys have other questions, you can feel free to reach out me to me uh, for email. Um, that's my phone number as well. Any of those, I'm happy to answer any other questions. Great. Thank you very much, Becca, for your presentation. I apologize for mispronouncing your last name a few times. My, my, my bad. Um, it's and quite all right. There was a couple of questions that came in about um, uh, the feeding trials specifically and feeding tr feeding trials mm -hmm. to, to dairy cattle and then levels of ergot. I think we might uh, just take those questions offline into the chat if you're willing to uh, field those and then just kind of move along here to keep our presentations going. Absolutely, I will address those in chat. Awesome. Um, okay, so for the last uh, 10 minutes here or so, um, we're gonna invite uh, Paul Greger for, uh, new addition to KWS 